If you've been here before, you know I like my big, bold, and kind of expressive colors. I think that's pretty obvious, and plus I think I state that in quite a few videos. But what I also like are dramatic monochromes. And as I continue to experiment and kind of develop my techniques in Luminar Neo, which is the product I'll be using today, um, one of the things I've found is that there's a kind of a shortcut, for lack of a better term, to getting a more dramatic monochrome, because there's several ways you can actually create a monochrome in Luminar. And I may say black and white monochrome. I'm using those terms interchangeably in this video. But I've got this photo from Iceland. And, you know, a photo like this, I would come in to develop raw. And I would start with uh, lifting the exposure a little bit, maybe adding a little bit of contrast. I think the, you know, the highlights are probably fine. Maybe lift the whites a little bit. And, you know, I've got a better start. So before and after. And traditionally, I would say the most common way of creating a monochrome is um, start with develop raw, of course, and then go to black and white. And that's, I think, what most people do. Click convert black uh, to black and white. And there you go. You've got a black and white or monochrome. And the thing is, that's not very punchy. It's not very dramatic. It's just kind of flat, for lack of a better term. Nothing wrong with it. I definitely recommend that you continue to edit and customize the photo, massaging the light, doing the things that you may want or need to do to a photo. So in other words, it wouldn't really stop here, but there are other ways to convert to black and white instead of just the black and white filter. So I'm going to turn that off. You could also go into the Mood tool and get a monochrome LUT and apply that, and that would give you probably a better starting point simply because LUTs can contain different instructions. It's kind of like a preset, and so it will adjust the light and the shadows and the contrast and things like that to give you potentially a more punchy monochrome. I won't be doing that in this video, but that is a way to do it. So that's two ways, black and white tool or LUT tool. A third way is if you go back in, I'm going to delete black and white just so you know it's not in use. And by the way, when you're on the edits tab, these are the tools that you've already used. And so I'm going to go over here because the third way is to just come in to uh, color and take saturation down to negative 100. And that, in my view, gives me essentially the exact same result as the black and white filter or tool did. It's a pretty middle of the road kind of just hey, it's black and white. We took the color out and that's all we did. There's no impact on contrast or anything like that because all it did is literally just remove saturation. So negative 100 on saturation here versus the black and white filter, I think essentially the same result. But the way that I like to go about doing this is actually with camera profiles. Now camera profiles are only available on a raw file. So note that, and there are a number of them that will be included based on the file type or the raw file type. So in other words, I, I shoot Sony, and when I'm opening the camera profile section in Sony, there tend to be some slightly different ones than if I'm opening an older raw file from my Nikon or Olympus days. And so just FYI, it can vary, and you can also go download these camera profiles from various places on the web. You would just have to Google that. But um, Luminar default is the default profile, but if you do the drop down, you can see I've got these other external profiles that are automatically provided, and of course, camera monochrome is one of them, and so you can see that immediately is a much more punchy and dramatic monochrome. Now, that is a combination of the edits I've already made, and so in this case, I would probably reset exposure to zero so as not to make it as bright as it was, but even so, it's quite a bit more dramatic, so to me, that's a little bit of a shortcut to getting a quick start on a more dramatic monochrome. And now from there, what I want to do is go in and kind of customize the edit so that it's really uh, adding the punch and controlling the light and doing the things that I want to do to the photo in order to make it look the way I want it to look. Of course, that's what my editing is about, right? So uh, as is probably yours. And so what I want to do is just massage this light a little bit more. And for me, one of the best tools for that is super contrast. And I say that a lot. Now, it's, I think, doubly important in a monochrome simply because there is no color and it's all about the light. And these are the different light areas or tonal areas, right? Highlights, midtones, contrast. It gives you a lot of control. And I think that's incredibly important as you're kind of moving the light around and trying to create a dramatic monochrome. So I'm going to go something about like that. And now I'm going to remove those spots because they're bugging me and they may be bugging you. And so I'm going to go ahead and get those out and I'm going to jump into the rest of the edit. So in a monochrome, when you've removed that kind of visual sugar rush of like bold, vibrant colors, you're left with just light. And so for me, when I want to massage the light, I use Develop. I essentially use Develop for dodge and burn. And that's most of what the rest of this video is going to be about how I go about looking at different areas and working the light to make it 
look the way I want or need it to look. I'm going to start with something in the sky, and I'm going to use a linear gradient, one of my favorite masks, and something I use quite commonly, uh, quite often, I should say, because I like that gradient fade. It's a really big deal to me to have that gradient fade because I think it just blends uh, what I do into the rest of the photo really well. So I've added that to the sky, and all I want to do is just darken it a little bit. And you might say, hey, Jim, why didn't you just use sky uh, in, in the masking tool? Why didn't I go over here and use mask AI and grab this sky? And the reason is, and I already said this, is that gradient fade. The linear gradient, by definition, has a gradient, so it fades that adjustment in because if I used Sky AI, it would get all this sky here that's brighter, and it would have darkened that, and I wanted to fade that darkening in, so that's a good way to do it. But you may have noticed when I did that, my, uh, my fade or my uh, gradient is also overlapping the mountaintop, so I don't want the mountaintops to be dark. So this is a fun little masking trick that I call Stack and Subtract, and I've done this in a few videos, but essentially I can use uh, Mask AI in combination with some of the other tools. So I laid a linear gradient across the sky. It overlapped the mountains. So I'm going to use Mask AI to identify the mountains, and it does it really well. So you can see here, this is a, a visual of the two masks. Up here is the gradient in the sky. You can see there's more, where it's more red up there in the clouds, and it fades to zero here, which is exactly what I wanted which is why I did not use the sky setting here in Mask AI, because it would grab all of that. I want the darkness to fade into the photo. Um, but uh, this is a combination of that mask and then uh, Mask AI finding the mountains. So I selected the mountains, but the cool thing is when you deselect them, it'll remove all of that. And so it cuts out where it overlaps or intersects. So this is like a mask intersection. I'm essentially subtracting the mountains from that linear gradient. That's what I call stack and subtract, and it works beautifully. The only thing to be aware of is there's a little edge um, or a little bit around these edges where the uh, mask AI for the mountains wasn't exactly perfect. So what I recommend is zoom in, go slow, get a small brush at a reduced strength and do a little brushing. I'm going to take a strength of like, you know, 45 or something, and I'll just go along the edge and kind of show you. I'm just going to do this quickly because it's a video, but I usually come in with a reduced strength butt brush and they just kind of paint along these edges, and all I'm doing is effectively adding a little bit of a gradient there where it fades into the photo. So maybe something like that, I recommend, again, going slow, zooming in, and cleaning it up, but that's how you can clean it up, but that will help you kind of get rid of that edge or that halo, because if you make additional adjustments, that halo is going to become more visible. So just keep that in mind. But that stack and subtract with a linear gradient and then the mountains and then removing the mountains gives me the ability to just really add a little bit of darkening to that top part of the sky. Now, that doesn't mean that Mask AI isn't useful. It is. In fact, I'm going to use it now. I'm going to go to Mask AI, and I'm going to get the water this time. And what I want to do is just go into the water, and it does a great job of grabbing the water. I mean, it grabbed just about every bit of it. And I'm just going to go in here, and I'm just going to take the whites, and I'm just going to lift them a little bit. Because remember... We're creating a little bit uh, more dramatic monochrome. So I want those whites to really pop, and I want the blacks to really pop. And so isolating where there's a fair amount of white that I want to uh, accentuate, which is uh, what I'm doing here. So before and after, not massive or drastic, but definitely visible. So maybe a tiny bit more. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to open develop again, and I'm going to get a brush mask. And I'm going to come in at like, you know, 75% or something. And what I want to do is just paint in some of these streaks uh, where there's water flowing pretty rapidly and kind of fading into the photo. And again, I recommend taking your time and getting it right. I did a very rough and quick kind of sloppy masking job. But all I did is kind of paint those areas. And now I'm going to lift the whites again just to make those areas stand out a little bit. I also lifted the exposure a tiny bit and the white. So if you look at those areas, now they're quite a bit more visible. And those, are, I think, are nice leading lines where you're dragging the shutter and getting that water motion. So there it is before, and there it is now. I think it stands out pretty well. Now, having done that, I want to accentuate the blacks in the foreground so that there's more contrast between what I just brightened in that water and the black sand. So once again, develop, mask, linear gradient. And in this case, the linear gradient is going to come like this. And I'm going to cover that entire area. And then I'm going to go into adjustments. And I'm just going to take the blacks and pull those down a little bit. 
So I've isolated just that foreground area and all I'm doing is dropping the black. So it's not gonna impact uh, all the stuff that I adjusted uh, already. So I'm just getting a bit more contrast there. So before and after. And if I need to, I can lift the whites a little bit just to make sure that they're still kind of punchy. So that foreground area before and after. Okay, close develop and I'm gonna open it again. And this time I'm gonna get a mask and a brush and I'm gonna keep the strength uh, fairly high. Let's call it 75. And I'm gonna shrink my mouse a little bit. So maybe something like this. And I'm just gonna come in and hit some of these areas that are a little bit brighter where there's a little bit of snow on these peaks. And all this is, is another dodge and burn. And uh, this is gonna be fairly repetitive in this video, but that's really how you go about doing these things here in Illuminar. And I think this is kind of the best way to do it is just come in and repeatedly hit uh, different areas of the photo with uh, different masks and different settings. So I brush that in a little bit, and what I wanna do is slightly lift the exposure. So I'm gonna go in and brighten those a little bit. Okay, there it is, a little bit brighter. So before and after, I think that looks nice. And again, you'll just have to play with the values and that sort of thing. But in order to create that contrast in that area, I wanna go in with a brush, same kind of thing, maybe 70%. And this time I'm gonna brush the dark areas. And if you guess that I'm gonna darken them, you are correct. I'm just dodging and burning, just creating contrast and drama, uh, just making it a bit more dramatic of a look across uh, the different parts of this mountain. So take your time, mask slowly, carefully zoom in. I'm not doing any of that here, but I do recommend doing that if you want your photo to kind of look uh, like you uh, spend some time on it, which you know I suspect you probably do. So I'm coming in and just doing a little bit of this uh, dash, uh, sorry, dodge and burn kind of dance, if you will. Let's say something about like that, and this time I'm just gonna do the opposite. So this is the burning part, I'm just gonna drop the exposure. Okay, and there it is. So if you look at the before and the after, definitely a little bit more contrast, which is all we're doing. Dodging and burning is just creating contrast, the difference between the bright and the dark uh, and that's all that is. And so two different things on the mountains, brighten the snow or the white areas, darken the shadow or kind of the black areas, and I'm just creating more drama in the photo. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna close, develop, open and develop again, get another linear gradient. And this time I'm just gonna do a quick kind of simple one up here in this corner, just because I want that corner to be a little bit darker. And I'm moving it up like that. I'm not gonna do the stack and subtract thing again. I'm just slightly darkening that corner uh, just because I think it looks a little bit better to have a little bit more drama over there because it's kind of darker in that area with a little pop of light here and a little pop of light right uh, there kind of in that uh, divot, if you will, on the uh, on the mountaintop. Now that I've done that, I'm going to close this and you know we're just going to wrap it up. So I think a vignette is in order here and I'm going to do something about like that. I like to come in. I like my vignettes to be a little bit round and definitely high in terms of feathering. And if you think it's important, add a little bit of inner light, certainly makes that photo pop. Uh, and then you can, of course, move the vignette around uh, and also choose subject. I think pretty, well, maybe not dead center, maybe a little bit off center would be slightly better. Maybe, maybe something about like that. And that's what the choose subject does. But if you look at before and after, I think that looks pretty nice. And then sometimes for the very last move to come in on a uh, kind of a dramatic monochrome, I'll come in with Accent AI, and I'll just give it a little bit of a pop globally, like 20 or 25, just a little bit. You don't wanna to go too far, although with monochromes, you can push them a lot further than you can in color, because without that color overload, you know, you don't get the, uh, oh my God, what'd you do? Too much saturation, you don't get that. When you see really contrasty monochromes like this one, people just think, ooh, that's, that's gorgeous, that's dramatic. Uh, so you can kind of get away with it more, so, you know, season to taste, in other words, but there it is before and after Accent AI gives it a nice little pop. And that is how I go about creating a dramatic monochrome camera uh, profile with the monochrome setting, I think gives me a better starting point than just removing saturation or converting to black and white. Uh, and uh, the rest is essentially dodging and burning the entire photo, picking areas and adding pops of light or just dropping the darkening areas or making them darker just to create that contrast. So now I've got nice contrast in the foreground, but nice uh, pops of white with all the uh, lighter areas and the darker areas are darker. Before and after, I mean, it's pretty, pretty massive difference in the photo. 
And of course, it was fairly blue looking. Um, I just shot in auto white balance, which is what I always do because you can convert a raw file quite easily. And so um, it looked a little bit bluer than it really was. Bottom line is, dramatic monochromes, pretty quick and easy. And that's how I go about doing it. Hope it helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with more Luminar videos. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.